Hi everyone, my name is Steph. This is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have another Bookish Friends Choose My TBR video and I'm really excited. I've actually, I meant to film this one in March, but March was just March. So I didn't get to it, but I'm really excited to start filming it at the start of April and hopefully for it to come out in the next couple of weeks. I'm not entirely certain how much B-roll I'm gonna get in this particular vlog but I am definitely going to be talking about the three books that the very lovely Tracy from bookend to bookend on Instagram has picked for me. So I did reach out to Tracy and asked if she would like to recommend three books and she very kindly sent through a list of three things for me to read, things that I haven't read before that I'm really excited to try because that's the beauty of this challenge is pushing me outside my comfort zone, getting me to read a few bits and pieces that I haven't read yet and maybe prioritizing things that have been on my list for ages which is uh, what the first book is that I'm going to talk about in a minute, getting me to prioritize those books and sort of bumping them up to the top of my TBR. So Tracy has been a long time subscriber and commenter and friend here in the online spaces. So I couldn't think of someone better to share recommendations. So the three books that she has selected are Devon and Chris Plan a Wedding by Chintia C. Higgins. And I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly. There is also The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. This one is by Megan Bannon. And I have seen this one around and I don't know all that much about it. So <laughs> that's going to be great to just read something that I keep seeing around, but just have not looked into in any depth for no particular reason, just because I didn't. And the last book is A Five Minute Life by Emma Scott, which I'm pretty certain will make me cry. Isn't Emma Scott the author who makes everyone cry? Pretty sure I've read it in Emma Scott at some point. Anyway, those are the three books that I'm going to be exploring over the next little while. So I will update you when I have some thoughts. I'm going to start with Devon and Chris Plan a Wedding because this one has been on my TBR the longest actively. I've owned it since it was released and I just have no excuse for why I have not read it yet. So I figured it's the perfect place to start. Welcome along on this journey and I will update you guys soon. All right so I finished Devon and Chris Plan a Wedding and it was a lot of fun. It was a reality TV show where the contestants have to plan a wedding in six weeks and try and convince everyone in their families that they are in love and so Devon and Chris meet at the opening night party where all the contestants are getting together and no one's been paired up at this point. Chris is an out and proud uh, social media influencer, fitness influencer and Devon is sort of is in the closet with her family and so she's using the show as a way to build up the courage to come out to her mother and her siblings. Anyway the two of them are paired together because, and there's a mutual attraction between the two of them and it goes through the six weeks and the six and the different challenges that they have to participate in as part of the reality tv show including convincing everyone that they know that they're engaged. It was fun I mean a, a reality tv show romance is always a little bit stressful I mean I read a lot of them but they're always stressful because you never quite know uh, the direction that you're going to take with it and the reason I don't watch reality TV is I don't like the way that it's really formulaic and the way that they pit people against each other so like I never know which way a romance author is going to take that in a book like Jodie McAllister does a really good job with it um, and anything that's site that's you know remotely stressful is signposted but I didn't know very much about this going into it so I was pleasantly surprised that it all worked out well and that it had a really lovely message and that the side characters were awesome there was a little bit of a you know, home wrecker twist kind of plot thing in there that was barely in there. But it was mostly just pretty joyful and happy and delightful. So this was a great start to this reading vlog. Hi everyone. So welcome to the next part of this reading vlog. I don't know where I've gone with my Kindle. Oh, here it is. Okay. Later today, I'm going to be starting The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. Yes, of Heart and Mercy by Megan Bannon. That's going to be the next part of this reading vlog. But I had to duck into work this morning to pick up some picture books because I have a stack of or a pile, a pile of picture books. I'm sure a pile of picture books is the collective noun for a large collection of picture books that you have to read. Um, so I'm going to be doing a deep dive into Jeannie Baker books, sorry about the glare, and I've also got a deep dive into Kelly Canby, so I've got one more book to read. So I had to duck into work very quickly just to go get the books that I had at work that weren't here. And then I said to pick up a parcel from the post office. This is from a publisher. It could be 50-50 from Alan and Unwin or Hachette, I don't know. I figured we would just share it here. Ooh, it's Ellen Norman. So there is How to Measure the Ocean. This is by Inda Ahmed Azari. I think this is, yeah, nonfiction, which is great, or narrative nonfiction. And then this one is a New Zealand title, I'm pretty sure. Yes, New Zealand. So it's Brave Kahu and the Porangi Magpie. So that's exciting. I haven't, I don't think I've received one of their New Zealand kids titles before. So those will get added to the pile. This one comes out on the 30th of April and I'm going to assume this one is also the same 
yes, 30th of April. So yay, new kids books. Um, in a little while, I am going to make some breakfast because it's 9.30 and then I think I'm just gonna watch a bit of YouTube for a little while and I will update you when I get into the undertaking of Heart and Mercy, which I'm excited about. I just thought I would show you in case you thought you wanted to know what a pile of picture books <laughs> looks like for two author illustrated deep dives. It looks like this. <laughs> to be honest, this book is the last book I'm reading from another particular author, so the stack would be about this high. <laughs> So I'm going to read some of these and then I will get back to the undertaking of Heart and Mercy. So I am 50% of the way into The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. Oh my god, why can't I say that name properly? The story of my life at the moment. It is the story of Heart and Mercy. Mercy is an undertaker in this small, cozy fantasy setting-ish place. And Heart is a marshal. And he's a demigod, so he's the son of a god. But he doesn't know his parentage. Right from the very start of the book, we know that they do not get along. And part of Hart's job is to kill drudges, which are people who have been killed in, I forget what the name of the place is, but it's sort of like this bridging space between the real world and this God-built world. And if a human dies in that space, they can become infected by like a parasitic organism that makes them a drudge, like a zombie. So Hart's job is to kill them and then he then takes the human back to the human world and to the local undertaking business. And in this world it's kind of, it's very much a business. Most people have to have these keys, they have to register for what happens if they die. And so they go to different undertaking businesses and Mercy's is a small family owned business and there is also a competitor, which is like a big corporate entity. So anyway, Heart and Mercy don't get along. They haven't ever. And part of that is to do with the fact that when they first met, Heart was going through quite a few things and he is a grumpy, grumpy, grumpy person who just doesn't know how to connect to people. Anyway, after they have their most recent blow up at the start of the book, he writes this letter. He realizes he's been called out on some things. He recognizes that he has some things he needs to work to work through and he writes it down in this letter just addressed to dear friend and he puts it into what a, what passes for their mailbox system here it's not addressed to anyone he doesn't think it's going to go anywhere and then it gets delivered to mercy and i love the the, the male <laughs> animals in this because they are all different animals and they all have delightful personalities that mostly entail roasting the people that they're delivering their mail to. So Mercy gets the letter and eventually she responds to it and the two become friends through these messages a la you've got mail. So I think I can use this as a um, as a retelling because it as a retelling prompt for the Bookamon challenge because it's basically you've got mail but make it crazy fantasy. And so at 50% of the way through the book Hart knows who Mercy is and that he's been writing to her. She doesn't know that. He's only just acknowledged that he's in love with her. This is at 50% of the way through the book. I'm not, I'm not sure what's gonna happen in the next 50% of the book. Like normally, it, it, like normally this would sort of be the 75% mark of a book. So I don't know what's gonna happen for the next part, which leaves me kind of intrigued. There is a, there is a lot more plot sort of in, like minor plot stuff happening in terms of Mercy's family's business and what's going to happen to it. Her brother was supposed to take over, but he doesn't want to do that. He wants to become a chef. Her sister is pregnant. Her father is no longer able to work. He had a health scare. And they're all deeply concerned that she is ruining her life by maintaining the business as the only one in the family who can and is interested in doing it. And they've got a buyout offer from the bigger company. But 
Mercy doesn't want to sell to them because that would be selling out. Again, Ella, you've got mail. Like, anyway, it's been a while since I watched that movie, but it's frightening how many details are coming back while I'm reading this book. And also the story with the drudges, they're becoming more prevalent, etc. And also Hart has himself an apprentice who is begrudgingly helping him to become slightly more aware of his feelings and the fact that he is actually still part human and that he is allowed to have feelings for other people. So I'm thoroughly enjoying this. It is exactly my kind of cozy fantasy. I don't know what's going to be in the next 50% of this book. So I don't know. I don't know. We shall see. But I'm thinking that soon I'm going to go out and get takeaway for dinner. I think I'm just going to go and get a pizza because I don't feel like cooking anything tonight. I did make myself delicious breakfast and delicious lunch. I'll check in probably when I finish the book now. Hi everyone. So <laughs> I forget how many outfit changes I'm up to today, but I've had a shower and I'm letting my hair dry. But I just finished the undertaking of Heart and Mercy and I really enjoyed it. I do think it probably was a little bit too long. The pacing in it sort of suffered a little bit as a result of that. But even then, I, I'm not quite sure how you would have cut down sort of what needed to happen in the story. And I was very pleased to see how everything sort of played out. Like I knew there was going to be a third act breakup because, you know, someone had to reveal that they knew about the letters. <laughs> And of course that always causes issues in stories like this. But at the same time, I think it was done really well. There's a second book coming out later this year following some side characters that we met very briefly in this story. So I'm, I'd am i be interested in continuing that because I quite like the world. But yeah, I really enjoyed the characters. I think they, as they got to know each other and we got to know them more, they become more lovable. So I really appreciated this one. As I said, my kind of cozy fantasy. And I loved that the two messengers in the story get to be part of the resolution of the story as well and some of their scenes are just truly delightfully funny and I, uh, I can appreciate that. So I'm going to wrap this up for today because it's like as soon as 7.30 hits here I just start to get all nasally because <laughs> yay. Uh, so I need to go take something so that I can breathe. Fun times recovering from illness. But yes I will be back at some point to read the third book which is the Emma Scott book so I will see you then. So I've started reading A Five Minute Life by Emma Scott and it's a full-on book. <laughs> it's a full-on book. So this is the story of Thea who in the very first chapter we meet her and her parents and her sister. They're on their way to her sister's graduation and along the way Thea and her parents are involved in a car accident. Her parents are killed and Thea is left with a traumatic brain injury that results in her not being able to recall long or short-term memory. She has uh, like the episodic memory. I forget what the other one is. Like she can do basic things like dress herself and eat and remember random facts for things, but her episodic memory and, and things that she remembers about her life don't exist. And so she basically lives her life in five minute increments. And then we meet Jim, who is a new orderly at the sanatorium where Thea is and he has a stutter and he's grown up in the foster care system and he's deeply empathetic. I mean he's mostly spending time with there but he, whenever he interacts with a patient he's very empathetic. He's he's always thinking about you know how how do I interact with them and how do I make their quality of life better and he spends most of his time with Thea and he is incredibly sad for her that you know she can't remember things every f after five minutes she resets she goes back and they have the same conversation over and over again but he knows that she was an artist and he notices the art that she does and he begins to see things in her art that other people because it's been two years that she's been in this place have stopped thinking about because it was dismissed at one point as simply just being her a quirk of her brain it's kind of that new eyes thing he, like he doesn't pretend to know what is going on he just notices patterns in in the words that she uses in her artwork and her sister is her primary caregiver and has quite strong feelings about Jim and any male being in her vicinity because they literally can't remember anything so she's got absolutely no defense um, which is the case when another orderly sexually assaults her and so there's a lot of sort of inner turmoil things going on because there is obviously a connection between Jim and Thea. At the end of part one of this story, which is about 43% of the way through the book, she has just been a candidate for an experimental surgery to try and help restore memory because what her new doctor suspects is that it's not actually about her having completely lost the memories, it's about her having misplaced them and not being able to access them. And so there is a trial that is going on to help people with amnesia with that kind of condition. And at the end of part one, it's maybe been successful. So yeah, 
like it's highly emotional like this is the kind of book where I'm I'm really stressed because there is a very big power imbalance between Jim and Thea in this first part and he's the kind of character he's very much a cinnamon roll he would never take advantage of someone but he's very drawn to her and he wants her to be happy that can be taken out of context in a really bad way obviously so that's kind of stressful to read because I don't like those sort of power imbalance forbidden romance type elements but the story itself is great Emma Scott's got a great writing style. One thing I will say there are ableist statements made in the book but it's characters who are being ableist and they're being called out or other characters are basically going no that's not the way that we talk about these people. Everyone who is a resident of the sanatorium of the of where theory is is someone who has experienced a traumatic brain injury and cannot live on their own they need support in order to function and you can tell that the majority of the staff who work there are trying to make that the best possible experience they can in a system that is not well funded so there's also a commentary on that in the book but I'm going to continue with the second half of this book. So I finished a five minute live and thank you Tracy I did bore my eyes out in like the last 30 percent of the book so thank you for that that's what I needed this afternoon. No it was really good it's it's a it's a great book but it is an emotional one and by the time you hit part three of the story it's it's pretty emotional and I think it's a really good one to reflect on what happens when someone you love is unwell particularly if you have power of attorney over them for whatever reason and I think it would be really easy to demonize Thea's older sister Delia who has been taking care of her for the last two years and we knew from the very start of the book that Delia and Thea are two very different people. Thea is a very wild child kind of character. She's an artist, she goes with the flow and Delia is very straight laced and by the book and needs to feel like she's in control of things and so of course when her parents die and when Thea is injured and incapacitated you know she takes control of all of that and kind of puts everything else on hold. And so throughout the book there's a lot of clashes between Thea and Delia particularly when Thea is on an experimental treatment and starts to regain her memory and wants to have the freedom of her life back. Um, and I think that's I think it's really interesting because you know it puts Delia and Jim at odds a lot of the time just because they're both trying to do the right thing in the way that they know how and it just happens to clash with Thea as well. So it was really interesting and I think just one of those books that you can read when you want something that's going to pack a really powerful emotional punch. It does have a baby log but there is no third act breakup so I can I can take that with the no third act breakup because that's always nice. And I also like that Jim gets his own side plot and his own really good growth throughout the book in terms of really believing with Thea's help that he can be more than what he was raised to believe that he would be. I think I forgot to say earlier that you know he suffered a lot of bullying growing up because of his stutter and not just bullying from kids but bullying from his foster carers and so that had a massive impact on him. But yes it's done. This vlog is done. I read those three books. <laughs> it's um yeah it's, it's been a lot they're all very very different and I think I enjoyed them all for very different reasons because I do like a good emotional read. I could be a liar and say I don't like to cry in books but I cry fairly frequently in books. Can I rank them? I don't know well I basically rated them all the same and so if I was going to rank them it would purely be on genre really which would probably put The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy at the top then this one then Devon and Chris plan a wedding and that would only be because <laughs> for some reason the uh the reality tv show stresses me out more than you know a main character who's suffering from amnesia. I don't know what that says about me. Anyway thank you again to Tracy for recommending these books to me. I had a great time reading them and it was nice to be pushed outside my comfort zone again. In the comments I would love to know if you have read any of these books or if you're planning on picking them up or if you have read other things by these authors that you think that I should read feel free to recommend those down below otherwise if you want to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment feel free to leave a clock emoji down below I hope that wherever you are in the world you're staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in my next video bye everyone mm -hmm.